I would say like a memorable battle for me was, was probably like 1992. It was a local battle in, in, in the Bay Area. And um, it, was, it was sort of like me, me coming out, showing like uh, all, these, all these other DJs that I looked up to, you know, kind of what, what I had. And I remember it was, it was Cuba who was judging, it was Mix Master Mike. And I was nervous because they were judging and I, you know, those are my heroes. And I actually ended up winning the battle. And I, I just remember practicing, you know, two or three months before, really, really getting it down, being nervous and being able to pull it off and having them, Q and, and Mike as judges, you know, vote for me. It, it really meant a lot, you know what I mean? Um, and that, that really motivated me to, to keep to keep going, to keep uh, pushing forward, you know. My top three underrated DJs, and I'm gonna put this in the, in the scratch DJ category, uh, to be specific, is uh, DJ IQ, he's from Los Angeles. And he's he's known in the, in the underground uh, battle circuit, but I don't think he's really got got a lot of uh, shine outside of that. He's he's got his own style as far as cutting, um, so he's definitely one. Um, Toad Style from Chicago is, is another. I mean, kids know who he is, man. But but he he's he's such a talented dude. He he makes beats, you know, uh, and but he's so natural at cutting, and uh, I, I wish he would he would uh, put out more music, you know. And number three, I would say is uh, DJ Ken One from uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, he's got his own style also. Uh, not too many people know about him outside of uh, Japan. So uh, yeah, I would say those top, those are my top three. I really realized that DJing was gonna be my career was was around 90, 94. I was, I was still in uh, school. I was going to San Francisco State University. And I, I was at the point where you know, my parents were like pressuring me, you know, do you, what do you want to do with your life? You, you going to DJ or you going to go to school? And so I was in school and I remember uh, Q and Yoga Frog called me up um, and they were like, hey, you should you should join our crew. Like you, you should be down with us. And back then, um, you know, I wasn't really doing shows. I wasn't doing much. I was just going to school and, and cutting in the, in the room. At that time, when they invited me to be down, um, you know, and do shows. That's that's kind of when I, I got that the green light to to, to travel, and and uh, you know really show you know globally like what my skills were. You know, what I learned from working with Q. Uh, he likes to freestyle a lot of stuff. He doesn't like to plan it out. He likes to just just go like you know like Q. What do you want to do? Oh, whatever. And 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 he's real free like that. And so. I've learned both both styles, like the, the structured, planned out routines, and then just the, the whole jazz side of things. And that's what, what, what I like about Q. He, you know, he's a jazz musician. He, he doesn't like to plan things out. Uh, he just goes, he's real spontaneous. You know, you can hear that in, in his, his shows. Like a, a lot of his shows, um, one show will be totally different from the other. And it's just because he's reacting to the energy of the crowd. You know, he's, he's doing what he feels at that moment. So having the opportunity to work with Shortcut, um, man, he's one of the hardest working dudes I know. Uh, you know, he's naturally talented. He's he's like a drummer uh, on the turntable, juggles. You know, he, he was influenced from a lot of guys in New York, uh, the X-Men, and then kind of took that influence and, and made his own style out of it, you know? Yeah, man, his, his work ethic is crazy. You know, he's always on the road always doing shows uh, nonstop. And, you know, he handles everything himself, uh, you know, as far as managing himself, booking himself. Um, yeah, yeah, shortcuts, he's a beast.